going on guys it's me parks here your coach of the arma arma who's bringing back smash and today here for week number three ladies and gentlemen of the dgba season four unlike every other week i've recorded thus far i have a i'm actually recording this video on the same day i have i did the battle which is insane actually no i think i might have I might have done it for JJ, but it was definitely a few hours apart. This time I did the battle and I literally, like 10 minutes later, here I am recording the video. I'm going against your boy Undersea Warrior, coach of Miami Rotom Pete, which is probably one of the coolest names ever. But he is currently 0 and 2, and I don't want that record to let, like, make you guys think that he's bad because he's not. He is incredible. I have seen some of his previous battles. He's definitely a force to be reckoned with. And his team is amazing. It's got a lot of offensive threats. It's uh, it's going to be a real hassle to try and get some defensive switch ins and really try and get some ground against this team because it just has. It's just so diverse and has so much. It can just do so well against me. As for your Arma or Maldus, we are currently one and one. We are third in our division out of four. I, um, Undersea Warrior is actually fourth. But if we manage to beat him, we will be second. We will beat uh, JJ and uh, not JJ, uh, JP in terms of differential because he is currently two and one with a minus one differential. Actually, no, a minus two differential. Sorry. So if we win this battle, even by one zero, we have beaten. Uh, JP and we are second in our division of course Cavs first but you know um, that that stupid nag needle it'll be actually kind of funny um, to be second in my in my um, division because I was the I was the team at the very bottom at the start of the at the start of the uh, the the DGBA season four so it'd be kind of funny to be like hey you know me I was the guy at the bottom now I'm second so that's going to be kind of funny. If you guys do enjoy this video at any given moment, leave a like, subscribe if you guys are enjoying my content. I will be uploading a new video next week in the DGBA Season 4 and maybe a random video on Tuesday or, or Thursday if I have the time. Maybe Thursday, definitely not Tuesday, but maybe Thursday. And uh, question of the day, I decided to steal this from... Uh, who, who, do I, who do I steal this from again? I'm trying to think who I stole this from. I think it's Coach Oak. I stole this from Coach Oak. But question of the day, what do you think our record will be in the DGBA Season 4, considering we have to play 9 weeks? So that means that it has to be uh, 2 numbers that up to, add up to 9, and you have to consider that I've already won a game and I've already lost a game. So at the very least, I can go 1-8. and eight. At the very most, I can go 8-1, and one, which <laughs> that would be... That'd be awesome if I could go 8 and 1, but I, I highly doubt. Personally, me, when I was interviewed in the DGBA Season 4 channel, I said that I go 5 and 4. I just want to go positive in this league and really just make an impression that I don't think that many people think that I'm good at Pokemon. And uh, after my uh, victory under my belt against JJ, coach the Peoria Pidgeots, I feel like I'm kind of showing myself that I'm decent at Pokemon. I can do alright, I can hold my own. But anyway, back to the topic. A question. We are going against Undersea Warrior. His first pick was Kumo, which is kind of weird because it was a 10 point Pokemon. But Kumo is a very scary Pokemon. If it sets up two Dragon Dances, it sweeps my entire team, which is scary. But Kumo can also be a Specs, Special Wall Breaker, having things like Clang of Skills, Focus Blast. Flash Cannon and Flamethrower. It can hit in the, uh, the Dragon Dancing set is super scary for my team. And also has two very good abilities in Soundproof and Bulletproof. I definitely expect him to run Bulletproof versus me because Shadow Ball is kind of annoying for his team and I don't really have any Pokemon like a Fire or Foom Burst or Hyper Voice or anything like that. Next up is Weavile and Weavile is renowned for being one of the best Pokemon offensively in the entire game. With one of the best typing synergies offensively being Ice and Dark. I mean it's horrible defensively but a beast offensively. It's got a base 125 attack, I believe, with a stab knockoff, which is very scary. One of the best pursuit trappers, apart from my boy, you know, Alula Muck. Uh, one of the best is pursuit trappers, and it can also have priority with Ice Shard. It can low kick, so that means Terrakion is needing a free switch into this Pokemon, and it can also tackle my bulky steel types like Ferrothorn and stuff like that. Weavile can also set up sword stances, but because of its lack of bulk, you probably won't see a sword stance Weavile. I'm super scared of a choice band Weavile set, I feel like that could be doing a lot of work. Even scarier, the scariest set you could probably bring is a Life Orb Weavile, because it can switch up moves and just deal so much damage, it can hit me with priority, and then hit me with a super strong move as well. 
Sakata is next, and I feel like this is new toy syndrome because he picked it up third round and it was only for eight points. Sakata is kind of an interesting Pokemon. Its defense stat is base 210, while special defense stat is base 130. Now that sounds incredible, but it is steel and rock type, meaning it is times four weak to fighting and ground, which is awful. Those are like the two types you do not want to be weak against because those are two of the best offensive types in the game. Um, uh, ground is one of the most spammable moves. Earthquake is one of the most spammable moves, and fighting, uh, definitely like close combat, is high up there. But fortunately, Staccato Saving Grace is actually its very low speed stat of 13, so it can set up some Trick Rooms. I'm not sure if a Trick Room would do very well against me because he played Haz last week and he almost swept him with a Trick Room. Luckily, though, Haz did have his Glyscore EV, so it undersped a Needle King. Not sure if that was intentional, but it was uh, EV to understate a Needle King, so that means that he did win the game 1 0 just to buy versus Undersea Warrior. I don't predict him to bring Trick Room versus me personally because I have got uh, four Pokemon base 50 or under, being Ferrothorn, Pilot Swine, Alola, Muck, and my Licky Licky, so I do not know if he'll bring that. Also, gar sorry guys for the switch of music, but Hughes just messaged me something very nice on Discord. So here you go, Hughes. Here is your shout out. Thank you very much for being an awesome dude. But let's get back into the video where these guys came to watch. Next up, we got Delmise. I really don't predict him to bring Delmise. It's just kind. It's it's a pretty bad Pokemon for my team. Not a pretty bad Pokemon in general, though. It's a very good spinner, and it actually has three stab moves, being Grass, uh, Ghost. And its ability allows its steel to be a stab move, so that's very good because it can use anchor shot and get that stab. It can also trap in Pokemon. As I said previously, Damage is a good spinner, but the thing that lets us down is firstly it is a horrible uh, it has a horrible typing for being a defensive Pokemon. Grass Ghost is horrible, it has about uh, 78 weaknesses and its speed stat is very low as well, being only base 40, so, you know, personally, I'd rather have my, my little Starmie over Delmise, but it's a, it's an, an incredibly hard hitter, its special defense stat is kind of lacking, which is why you'll probably see a little assault vest most often. Next up we got Arcanine. Arcanine is a very scary Pokemon for my team. Defense, fully physically defensive, intimidating. Arcanine can be very scary if it is running Wild Charge, uh, Flare Blitz. I did predict a set for it. Uh, Wild Charge, Flare Blitz, will wisp and Morning Sun can do very good things against my team. So that's why I had to make sure to preserve my responses to Arcanine at all, res at, all um, at all given opportunities and make sure that it cannot break through my defensive core. Next up is Primarina. Primarina is probably the most scariest Pokemon on his team because um, this might be uh, Jack. Jack's uh, versions of Primarina giving me uh, nightmares, but uh, a sub Primarina with HP Fire, Hydro Pump, Slash, Sparkling Area, and Moon Blast can destroy my team. And I basically have to sag off a po a Pokemon just to break its substitute, so that's kind of scary. It can also run out with a choice of Scarf as well, which would be kind of scary, but definitely the substitute is the most scariest set if I were to see it. And Mega Pidgeot now, another great Pokemon, the, the second fastest Pokemon on his team, reaching a speed of base 121. This Pokemon is probably one of the biggest definitions of bird spam, being able to fire off base 120, 20, base 110, something like that. Basically, huge hard hitting hurricanes, which are no guard boosted, so that means that it will be 100% accurate, and also it has a 30% chance to confuse, which is super annoying. It's not as annoying as it was last generation because confusion's kind of been nerfed down from a 50% to a third, but it's still kind of annoying if you do get randomly hit in confusion. But uh, it also has got some got, got some sorry. It also has got some pretty good utility, being able to set up things like Tailwind, and also being able to defog. It also gets reliable recovery in Roost. And if I were to predict a set, it would probably be like Hurricane, Heat Wave, uh, Defog, and Roost. Do bear in mind, though, guys, this is a, a pre uh, like a. I've already played the battle versus him, so I know what he's brought versus me. This is just speculation what happened before I was going into the battle. Yuxi is another Pokemon that I can definitely see him bringing a fully special defense. Yuxi rolls quite a few, a few of my Pokemon. However, it does get rolled by a little muck, so it might be a special defense. Cold Berry set. Heal Bell is quite good on Yuxi as well as Stealth Rocks. Those were the two moves I'd probably be expecting him to carry, as well as you turn him maybe Psychic or Psy Shock. That is because uh, I. It, it's no surprise, but I love to run status. It's an incre Status is incredible, okay? 
it's underrated. Toxic, Thunder Wave, Will West, all those things are gorgeous. So, um, definitely if he wants to prepare for my status side of my team, and he can run heal belt on UC. Just very uh, bulky pivot, and I could probably see it coming and doing quite a bit of work if he does decide to bring it. Kartan is the next Pokemon, having uh, an incredible base speed of base 109. The last time I played against Kartana, I actually got swept 4-0 by it. It was by Ashes Close, so I'm making sure not to make that thing uh, sweep me again. I've learnt my lesson, and I have invested properly in trying to beat this Pokemon. Uh, we have been, me and Norm Zero have been speculating, and I believe has as well. I'll give a shout out to everyone who helped me as the team in a bit. But um, I was speculating with Non Zero and has, and a timid Kartana is super scary versus my team. Uh, once he gets the speed boost up, he can I speed all my team, bar Starmie and Tornadoes without a scarf. And um, see Kartana, I know that a lot of people were talking crap about it, but. The Seeker Tom is pretty good being able to run Dark Z knockoff or Night Slash, by Z Sacred Sword, and boosting up the Stab, uh, Steel, and Grass type with those uh, Z moves. It's like Terrakion, basically. Like, uh, you might not be running a Z move every single time, but it's just so that you can, you can boost your Stab moves up so that can give that extra little bit of a hit. I don't know how I got Nidoking at 10th round, but he did. Nidoking is an incredible wall breaker on the special side. Can't hit it on the physical side, which I think people do forget. It does get Sucker Punch, Mega Horn, Poison Jab, Earthquake, other things like that. Also another Pokemon that can set up Stealth Rocks and a Toxic Spikes. So very scary Pokemon. Good Scarfer, however, I am predicting him. If he does bring a Scarf, Nidoking, I will have that sorted out. I have... Um, responses for both Modest Scarf Nido King and the uh, Max Speed. I think it's Timid uh, Nido King. I think it's Timid. Uh, I could be getting it wrong with Jolly. I can I can hardly tell the difference between them two. I'm sorry. But finally is Rotom, and I think Rotom's a very nice pick for this team because it gives him that nice little, um, just that nice little blue between the team. It gives him another defogger, so Delmise isn't too pressured to uh, give, uh, remove hazards. Rotom could do quite a lot of work versus my team because it is uh, quite fast being base 91 speed. It can get off the slow bolt switches, it can burn some things, and also it can set up light screen and reflect. If it is a light play set, it can actually set them up for 8 turns, which is super scary because if you have a Cartana or a Primarina behind that, or even a Mega Pidgeot, then I might as well just I might as well just leave the game right now. So we're gonna gonna go on to uh, showdown, and I will be showing you guys the team I decided to build for this man. Okay, guys. So I'm now gonna be going through my mons. So firstly, I decided to bring my boy Rudum Wash. It's got a pretty good matchup this game, except from the Cartana, which can't go cool with the Leaf Blade. So I'm going to be running a Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Thunder Wave, and a Flame Split. This Pokemon is a very good switch in to not only Mega Pidgeot, but potentially to Weavile. I did the Calcs, however, and an Adamant Choice Band of Weavile's knockoff does do at max uh, half to Rotom Wash. So that's kind of scary, but I can Pain Split up the or Pain Split off the damage that it deals and kind of preserve this Pokemon, I guess. Uh, his team kind of struggles against uh, just against a uh, special electric and water stab generally, generally. And also, if got Thunder Wave, something like the Como, then that means it needs to get to plus uh, four to outspeed all my Pokemon that uh, aren't scarf uh, that are scarf. Sorry, and it also means that the Cartana is not uh, any more of a threat. Uh, next up, we have got Mold Small. If you guys cannot tell, this is Undertale themed. Uh, but Mold Small, my little muck, making the return with the Figgy Berry Gluttony again. Same set as last time, except uh, with the moves so where I have switched out Ice Punch for Poison Jab, and also I've got enough Spadef. I'm just a, I'm just a very uh, Spadef invest invested muck. I can't believe what the, I, I mean, um, I can't remember what the Spadef investment was for exactly. I, I, oh no, I, I, it was so that I could live a modest life for Earth Power from a Needle King, and then I just invested the rest into the fans because that seemed pretty smart. This is my response to most of the Pokemon on this team, so Lola Muck is going to be doing a lot of work for me. It's going to be taking hits from the Cartana, hopefully. It's going to be taking hits from the Mega Pidgeot if my Rotom Wash does get knocked out or worn down to the point that can no longer be a pivot and is probably just uh, death fodder. So next up, I have got my um, Delphox, my Scarf Delphox, of course. I, I'm, I, I think this is pretty obvious. 
of a bring, but I decided to bring it anyway. I've got uh, I've got Tree Scarf with Psychic and Flamethrower. I really want to run, run a Psy Shock, but Psychic just does more against his Pokemon generally. It hits Como harder, it hits Nido King most notably harder. It doesn't hit Primarina as hard, but uh, Psy Shock wouldn't have hit it that hard anyway. I'm pretty sure there's like a 5% difference between them two. Trick is very nice because if there is like the Weavile, if the Weavile and the Cartana and the Kumo, which it, it, it's saying a lot actually, if the Weavile, the Cartana, the Kumo, and if the Mega Pidgeot are all worn down or are dead, then I can Trick, which is saying a lot, but Trick was basically just there as a filler slot, it just as a you know, I'm gonna do the wee bunny ears, but just a, a best alternative, like, uh, just, to, just in case, like, 99% of the time I'm gonna be clicking one of these two moves. And finally, Wish, because if Chimeku is classed as a good Wish Passer, then why not? Delphox, I got enough speed so I can outspeed a, uh, well, what's this one for? Okay, let me, let me check. Okay, this one is for a Modest Needle King, it also speeds a, uh, Cartana, of course. Next up we've got uh, Terrakion. This speed investment is so that I can outspeed a timid Nido King, which is very nice. And uh, uh, I, I don't really see him running. Uh, actually, no, it's so that I can outspeed Scarfed uh, Timid Nido King. It also is so that I can outspeed a Jolly plus one Como. And this Pokemon is going to be doing a lot of work versus his team, hopefully. It did a lot of work versus JP. Uh, no, not JP, JJ, uh, last week because it really shuffled, shuffled around a lot of his Pokemon. It, ki it killed the Darkrai, it killed Thunderous Therian, and oh my goodness, it just did so much work. Uh, so I've j just basically got enough coverage so that I can at least hit something neutrally or very hard in his team. Um, X Scissor wasn't really necessary, nor is Earthquake, but I'm pretty sure I had it. I had like it for like one Pokemon. I'm trying to think down it. Add X is for the Uxie, but even though I think that Stone Edge did more, but you never know. Uh, it was Stone Edge missing, and maybe I just wanted to see if Knockout. I don't know. Again, this is just another filler move, just in case I needed it. Next up, we've got Flowey, my Farathorn, and yes, guys, I was desperate for nicknames. I'm sorry. Uh, with the Stealth Rock, Gerable, Toxic, and Hidden Power Fire, and the Aukaberry. Aukaberry is very nice because he is going to be running a lot of fire coverage on his Pokemon. Um, as I said, just to name a few, he's got probably he might have like flamethrower on Como, he might have uh, heat wave on Mega Pidgeot, flamethrower on Nido King, hidden park fire on Primarina, he might have Ockerberry. What else? I mean, he could have hidden park fire on any of his, of his Pokemon tacked in. So this essentially means that um, I can live any fire type movie wants to go for and I can get at my st stealth rocks pretty safely because his hazard removal isn't too great if he doesn't bring down eyes then uh, uh, or Rotom then I can definitely get up stealth rocks if he only brings down eyes or Rotom then uh, I'll still probably get up rocks pretty safely. Gyro Ball is just uh, my best heading move. Hidden Power Fire is for the Cartana. Sorry for that guy, so, for some reason my music cut out. But um, Hidden Power Fire is very nice because it does Oku the Cartana. Actually no, it doesn't Oku. It has a 95% chance to knock out a non-HP invested Cartana. Uh, so that means that if I get up Stealth Rocks, it's a confirmed Oko. And also it's very nice because I don't need Ferrothorn healthy this game. It's just nice to get off the surprise kill versus Cartana at the best. It can Oko the Weavile, but I have responses like Scarf Tarak. On Scarf Delphox, the Weavile, so I, I'm completely fine against the Weavile, in my personal opinion. Uh, Toxic is also just very nice in case Kumo tries to set up a Dragon Dance. It's like, yeah, you can set up, but also chew this Toxic, so that might force him to only get up to one Dragon Dance and therefore I can revenge kill Delphox. But anyway, um, uh, I don't need Ferrothorn Health in this game, it will probably be sacked off probably the earliest out of all my Pokemon. It's just not very useful this game. I only really have it for the sake of Stealth Rocks and a surprise Hidden Park Fire. And finally we've got Luke's My Starmie with the Cobra Berry with enough investment so I can I, that I can live a Choice Band Adamant Weavile's knockoff 
and an, uh, and enough speed so I can outspeed a Mollus Nido King. It doesn't look like it, but 16 speed is enough to uh, outspeed a Mollus Nido King. I was even surprised, but I've just got generally a defensive set with Recover, Ramp, Spin, Scald, and Psychic. I needed a Hazard Remover, and I didn't have any room to fill in Defog onto my Rotom Wash, so I decided that Rabbit Spin would be best. After all, if he isn't going to be bringing the Rotom or the Down Mice, which is quite a big possibility, and uh, then I don't want to be removing my rocks or the defogger. I want to keep up my rocks and remove hazards on my side of the field. So that is the team that I'm going to be bringing. It's a pretty solid team. People have been saying that it's basically um, gonna. It's basically the best I could have done against Undersea Warrior because, as I said previously, his team is crazy. But thank you for Non-Zero has Hughes. Uh, and Cav for helping me with this team. Of course, I made most of the ideas. I think that the only idea, let me see, I think that the only idea that was really changed was that I'd run a Hidden Park Fire on Ferrothorn, but I think that was about it. And also, I also had like Power Whip or Knock Off. I had Knock Off in the slot, but I placed it with Toxic because people were saying that. Uh, Como set up too easily on my first one. So apart from that, uh, everything else is my ideas. I just, uh, <laughs> but I do want to show you some appreciation for those guys checking out my team and giving me the thumbs up. So without further ado, let's get into the battle. Oh okay, guys, so we are here with the battle against under uh, uh, undersea warrior. I always called him Undercalf for some reason. But he brought everything I predicted him to bring instead of uh, Primarina, he brought Delmise, which isn't too much of an issue for my team. I can work around it, I just don't think that it did very much against my team. Ferrothorn hardwalled it, and it gave me a free switch into a load of muck every time. But anyway, um, everything else is pretty much a threat. That Mega Pidgeot is going to be very hard to switch into, as well as Weaver. Uh, just generally, everything on this team is very scary to switch into. If Rotom Wash gets worn down, Nido King can also sweep me, which I also have to be uh, careful about. If he's Scarf Nido King, then I definitely have to keep my Delphox alive. But without further ado, let's get into the battle. I have got this on super slow, and I probably will be pausing because there are quite a few plays I need to explain. So I am going to lead off with Luke's my Starmie now. Starmie was the best lead in my personal opinion because it countered every, it countered the most Pokemon, um, like, uh, it was the best lead in my, uh, in my opinion because, um, it, it matched up well against Nidoking, against the Kartana, against the Weavile, and against the Komo. Now, I know that people are going to be saying, well, why is it matching up well against Kartana, but, um, I, I'm pretty sure you would have assumed I might be running Hidden Park Fire on my Starmie. I'm not. I'm running Scald, which still har harms the Kartana a lot. But it did pretty good against those uh, matchups. But of course, he leads off with the Mega Pidgeot. This is super scary. And I am forced to make my only switch into my Rotom Wash. I do live its Heat Wave. I live its Bird Stab. So I'm going to be taking this Hurricane very easily indeed, as he is going to go for the Hurricane, and you're going to see how much damage that is going to do. Not much at all, considering I am a fully physically defensive pivot. So I'm going to be healing back up, and that only did 25%, so he, uh, he is going to be switched out, and this time I decide to go for the Thunder Wave, because I know Nato King is not going to come in, and everything else that is a switch in apart from uh, Delmice doesn't appreciate Paralyzed, uh, being Paralyzed, sorry. Even Delmise doesn't appreciate being uh, paralyzed too much because that means they might get paralyzed in some uh, important turns. So I decided to go for the Vault Switch here and get in, the, uh, get in my Ferrothorn because I can't set up my Stealth Rocks here. I do live two of its stabs and the, um, the third stab, its Ghost Stab, um, will activate my uh, my Iron Barbs uh, as, as you see it works. So it kind of escaped but I'm like I don't really care, it doesn't really matter as it is going to show the left ubers and I'm going to get a bit of chip on it. Now this is where I get up my stealth rocks and he does reveal to have the hidden part fire. And I realize that I'm trapped and I'm going against hidden part fire down mice which is super obnoxious because this, this guy has, I have to give props to warrior, he did very good at trapping my fair thorn throwing me into a false sense of safety and then going for Hidden Park Fire. So I do love two of those fortunately and I am going to go for the Jar Ball here. Just test the waters and see how much damage that it does nothing. So I do 8% of damage which is essentially a turn of leftover so it's going to basically get all those, uh, get that up. So here, um, here uh, on the unlikely chance that he goes for Rapid Spin 
I decide to uh, go for rocks here. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I can play. So it goes another hidden part fire, but uh, I was going to spam rocks here in case he wanted a rapid spin because that basically forces him to keep up rocks and then I can get him like Alola mocking for free and then knock off this Pokemon or knock in a switch in, which would be very nice. So I am going to go into that Alola muck, as I said previously, it matches up very well against the Stelmice, and if he wants to spin, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. He is a fully physically defensive pivot, as it is going to take that hit very well. It would be nice if he did get fully paralyzed here, unfortunately he does not, and he is going to spin away those rocks, which is super annoying, because rocks do 25% Weavile, 25% Pidgeot, chip down the Kartana, and uh, yeah, that, that would have been super nice. It would have chipped down Kartana uh, to the point where... Uh, Starmie, like two skulls from Starmie, Starmie might have uh, knocked it out. He is going to go out into the pitchy up and digging the knockoff, and he shows that he has work up, which is insane. And that is going to be scaring the heck out of me because a plus one pitchy yacht is a very scary Pokemon. Uh, so I decide to go with the poison jab here, as luckily I do get the poison. You see, you don't even need poison touch. Why you bother getting poison touch when uh, Gluttony Alola Muck is the bay anyway? So. I'm gonna go a spam poison jab here, just try and see if I am gonna do over 50% and if I can win this skull match. I knew that 99% of the time he would go for roost anyway, so I am gonna chip him down, basically down to about the same HP he was at. So I decided to go into my root and wash because I can take a plus one hurricane from this Pidgeot very easily. If he decides to go for U turn, then I I'm basically at the same health anyway. So he is going to go for the Roost again. I can't take this Hurricane very easily and knock it out of the Volt Switch. If he decides to go back out into Delmice, then my Alola Muck after the Volt Switch damage will be able to knock it out with the knockoff. If he decides to then uh, switch out into Mega Pinchion, then it's just taking more damage. So he goes to Hurricane. It confuses me, unfortunately. But fortunately, I decide that Rotom decides to break through... And um, it is going to put Pidgeot into the range where the poison from Alola Mug is going to be uh, destroying it. So it is going to be knocked out by this poison. So that's a kill for Alola Mug right there. And also, I decided to go out into Delphox because it matches up best against this Pokemon. It outspeeds Weavile, it outspeeds Como, it outspeeds Nidoking, it outspeeds Kart. Actually, it just beat every single one of his Pokemon. So uh, assuming he didn't have Scarf Weavile or uh, Scarf Kartana, then it would have outsped all of his Pokemon and I would have been essentially being able to get a kill. Uh, he probably would have stacked up down nice. Uh, but anyway, uh, I felt that that was the best play, so I am going to kill off this Mega Pidgeot, which is great because it was a huge hassle to swap into. And my Rudin March is still healthy enough so that I can potentially take a hit from a Life Orb Weavile. So he's going to go out into that Weavile and I'm like, okay, this Weavile does not know that I am Choice Scarf. It does not know it's going to hit him. And instead, I feel what is going to hit me as a Choice Scarf knockoff is going to be hitting me. This is very good, though, because this does give me a free switch into my Terrakion where I can just go for the Stone Edge. So I go do that. Uh, a plus one Terrakion is super scary uh, versus him. So uh, he decides to go switch out into his Ron Burgundy. Just going to go sag off his Delmice as I am fortunately going to connect my Stone Edge. And I am going to be knocking off this Delmice. But unfortunately, that is going to give him a free a switch in, which, you know, uh, it was it was bound to come. It was bound to come to this Pokemon come in. He goes out into Entry Rune, the Kartana, and I really do not have much resp many responses left for this Pokemon. The only good response this Pokemon left is Alola Muck. Um, this Pokemon still has a Z crystal in, um, in use, so if a Stelium Z... Um, Stelium Z Smart Strike is going to come out, that is definitely going to destroy my Alola Muck. So I have to switch into my Alolan Muck, it is my best pivot in case he goes to Sacred Sword or to the Leaf Blade. He's going to set up a Sword Stance here, so I'm forced to sackle off my Rotom Wash here. Uh, it, it didn't really do much for me anyway, because Weavile, like, uh, I, 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 I couldn't see it living any hits. Nido King Sludge Wave have knocked me out, Kumo uh, Dragon Claw should have knocked me out. Uh, and if he does go for the Stelium Z, I can actually survive it, and then I can get off a Volt Switch, putting it in range so that my Alola, so that my Terrakion should be able to revenge kill it. So he is just going to fire off the Z move instead of the Fighting EMC, a Sacred Sword. Thankfully, however, this is not a Timid Kartana, it is a offensive Adamant Kartana, as he is going to be getting the attack boost. If he was a Timid Kartana, I think I might have lost the game. Maybe Alola Muck might have been able to chew a plus uh, to you. Um, uh, smart strike, who knows, I think I probably could have, but I go out into Terrakion, 
I have no other alternative but to show off that I am a Scarf Terrakion, as I am going to go for the close combat here. I actually took, I was watching, um, uh, this is going to be kind of embarrassing to admit, but I was watching Minecraft while this happened. So I watched like a minute into the Minecraft video, like I obviously knew my player would be, uh, go into Terrakion, but um, I was watching the Minecraft video and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make him think that um, Terrakion is not Scarf. So I, I waited an entire minute. And I feel like that mind game, that those mind games really helped out because it lured him to a fall, false sense of security, thinking that my Terrakion was not scarfed, and that if it was, uh, and that uh, it would, uh, it would, like I was just pleading that it would outspeed the Cartana. But fortunately, I do knock out the Cartana, so it is a three-on-three -three situation. However, his Pokemon are all healthy, whereas I am a, I am a minus one. Uh, Terrakion, so he goes out on the, into Nido King, and unfortunately I have no switches left this Nido King. My Rotom Wash is down, my Berry Ferrophone is down, <clears throat> so my only switch in this Pokemon is Starmie, as he does reveal to be a physical life orb build, which I thought was pretty awesome. I feel like physical Nido King does not get enough love, so he goes to Earthquake and it's going to be dealing about 66% because um, I, am a, I am quite invest into defense but he is actually going to shoot a sucker punch here as my cold berry is going to activate and starmy the legend is going to survive on 2 hp and i'm going to fire off this nuke of a skull and i'm going to take down this nido king and this is fantastic it's fantastic because it forces weavile to come out to revenge kill me or else Kumo to come in where it gets so knocked, uh, where it gets so chipped down by Psychic that a close comma from Terrakion will knock it out. So he is forced to go for the low kick here with Weavile. If he goes for like a knockoff, then my Terrakion comes in and wins because my Alola Muck can beat this Weavile. So I go into my Alola Muck because I can take low kicks for days. As he is going to swap out his Weavile, obviously, because low kick is not going to do much. So he is going to go out into Yoshi. I love that nickname, by the way. I love the Yoshi nickname. The Kamo, but I am going to go for the Poison Jab, as Alola Mug is putting in the work, getting a Poison, and now he is getting a Crypt. So, he shows to be a... I'm not sure if there's the specs, but it was definitely a special, defense, uh, a special offensive build, which I was just praying, and I was like, I was praying before this, I was like, please don't be Dragon Dance, please don't be Dragon Dance, and he was not, he is a special, a special offensive Como, so that means that I should be able to win this game now with my Alola Muck, as his best move to hit me with was Flame Thrower, as you are going to see. Uh, so I am going to hit him with the Poison Jab here, get the Poison fortunately, but I'm pretty sure uh, another one should have been able to knock it out if I did get a moderate roll. So he is going to go for the Flame Thrower here, as I actually decided to go for the Recycle here. Now, I know that uh, Recycle um, um, Alola Muck uh, made me uh, lose it. To and across my last game versus JJ, but if he decided to show the clanging shield scales and that he wasn't choice in any way, as he is going to show here, if he did decide to go for the clanging scales here, then that would have meant that I would be in the back of at 100 HP. I would have been able to recycle, and this Pokemon would have went down to the toxic damage, which is phenomenal. So he gets some stealth rocks, which again I didn't know this Pokemon got stealth rocks. But you can cut me some slack because this Pokemon only got Stealth Rocks and Ultra Sun the Moon. So I go knock out the Kamo and I feel like I've won this game because I got the Fire Punch tacked onto my Al Alola Muck. This Weavile is forced to go to, to, for the low kick uh, to beat my Pokemon. So it does go for the low kick as you're going to see that there's pitiful damage. Only a mere 25% even if it was like a high roll crit. Then it still would not have done anywhere near the damage to knock me out. I think I'm going to go for the Fire Punch, that is 2 hit KO, and I am going to win very confidently against Undersea Warrior 2-0. So he goes to the final low kick, as he says that the Cold Warrior saved me, it did, and I am super proud of my boy Starmie. Talking about being proud of Pokemon, let's talk about my boy Alola Muck. Did, did not do anything last game, even though it was supposed to. Um, gets like 2-3 th kills in this game, uh, gets a Toxic Kill on Pidgeot. Guess a kill on Kamo, guess a kill on Weavile. Uh, so that's that's just uh, astounding to me. I knew the little muck would be a great pickup, and I'm hopefully showing that you know what, a little muck, it's great little muck. Only got one weakness to grind, but uh, of course, our Ma our Malus are now two and one. We are second in the division, and our next week battle will be going against Mike. So that is going to be a very easy win for I'm joking. Uh, Mike is a very a very good baller in his own right. He actually replaced me last uh, season 
And I know that I said they'll be going up against JP this season, but you know what? I don't know how schedules work. Uh, I'm just super confused. I usually have to run to Haz and ask um, who am I battling because I'm so confused about the timetable. But thanks guys for watching this video. Your man Mal is now 2 and 1. And currently we are in playoffs, in the playoffs race. But of course, this is only the the first uh, third of the season. There are two more thirds to go. So uh, be pumped, be excited, make sure you go root for your arm all those. And thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe, comment down below what you think my record will be this season. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.